Question. Which are the choirs of the second hierarchy? Answer. Following St. Gregory, St. Anselm, St. Bernard, we count in the second hierarchy dominations, principalities, and powers. It is also to be remarked that the third choir of each hierarchy has a certain relationship with the first of the subsequent ones. The three of the first hierarchy were typical of the essential acts of God. The three choirs of the second hierarchy represent the external acts of God and are typical of those in their highest order as being nearest to his essential acts. Question. What is the meaning of dominations? Answer. The title domination means the fact of being in possession of all authority. Now, in the external world, the first idea pertaining to God is that he is absolute Lord of the universe. He was its creator, and therefore, by incontestable right, its sole Lord and master. In this way, the first of the second hierarchy is typical of that first great external act of the eternal God, his attribute of sovereign dominion. Question. What is meant by the term principalities? Answer. The term comes from the word principare, to make a beginning, to be the first to lead on, to point out the way, to direct, to legislate. Now, of all things, that which comes next in God to his attribute of universal dominion is his setting down laws to bring all things orderly and with decorum to their destined end. This is a necessary sequence of his absolute sway and follows hot foot upon it. He were not God if he wanted this, at least in our present idea of God. Through me kings reign, and the builders of the laws decree what is just. This noble attribute of the bountiful God is thus sweetly typified by the choir of angels that we call principalities, and set down according in its regular order. Hence the duty of this choir of angels is to praise God evermore for the wisdom displayed in his ruling and legislating for the external creation. Question. What is meant by the term powers? Answer. By the term power is meant the attribute both of putting laws into execution as well as of rewarding or punishing. In the state or commonwealth we recognize the ruler, the legislator, and the executive power. Now, one of God's attributes, and that most immediately connected with his attribute of legislating, is the power by which he put these laws of his into execution and rewards obedience to them, or punishes their infringement. And this is one of his universal external acts, and the latest and most final. For he shall judge not alone rational creatures, but, in a certain sense, even irrational ones also. This is, moreover, his last external work. Now, most fittingly, in this second hierarchy, which represents his universal external acts, is this, the last of them, typified by the last choir in that hierarchy. The duty, then, of this choir is to sing God's power as manifested daily in the carrying out of his universal laws and in the judgment he judges on his creatures. Their duty also is to shadow forth this to the inferior ranks of angels, those of the next hierarchy. Thus, these three choirs forming one hierarchy shadow forth the threefold action of the Creator as absolute Lord, that is, possessing domination as ruler, whence principalities as executive, and judging having all power, whence potestes or powers. The first of these dominations is immediately connected with the last of the preceding, i.e. the thrones. Now, the last of these powers usually has a connection in like manner with the first of the following hierarchy.